Hey y'all. Welcome back. Okay, so I'm doing episode four today, which is an episode that I actually enjoy. So it starts off and they are getting a distress call, but the distress call is coming from a ship that was out there about 200 years ago. So it's been a hot minute, okay? But they are on the edge of the galaxy, is where they're at. Okay, they're on the edge of the galaxy, is where they're at. And no one's ever been that far. Thus, why this episode is called Where No Man Has Gone Before. I apologize for the crazy hair today, but in all honesty, I just didn't have time. So starts off like I said they're getting a distress call but it's from a ship that is 200 years old called the Valiant so they're on their way over there to find out what happened So, Spock and Kirk are playing chess, which you're going to hear quite a bit, and Kirk's like, the bridge said they were going to tell us when we got close, when it was on their sensors and all that, and Spock's like, I'm going to beat you in this next move. And Kirk's like, have I ever told you you play a real irritating game of chess? And Spock's like, irritating? Like, he doesn't know what that means. He's like, oh, that's one of your earth emotions. Because, you know, Vulcans don't have emotions, which is a lie. They totally have emotions. But they choose not to use their emotions or acknowledge them is really what's going on but you know whatever okay so i am using a new foundation today and i'm just not really sure if i'm digging in or not anyway so kirk makes his move and spock looks at the board and he's just like what? And Kirk's like, are you sure you don't know what irritation means? Because he's obviously irritated by the move that Kirk just made. Which in his opinion should not have been the next move for him to make. And then the guy comes over the screen and he's like, alright Captain, we're within range. But it's little. It's only, you know, it's Something we can beam on board if you want to. And Kirk's like, go ahead, beam on board. So him and Spock leave the recreation room and they head down to the transporter room to see what it is. And he tells them, you know, go ahead, because they're sitting there in the transporter room waiting for it to come on. And Scotty, which this is an episode he's been in, we haven't talked about him before because he hasn't been in episodes before, but he is basically over engineering, so you will hear his name a couple more times. Beams it on board, and it's like an old timey recorder, but it kind of looks like a fan motor with like three legs and like this dome on top but it's all messed up and Spock's like okay well something had to happen for it to look like that like obviously something happened to the ship that it was on but they want to try to get whatever information they can get off of it because it's kind of like the black box that they have in airplanes 
and it runs off tapes, but it's an ejectable one. They can eject it out of the ship because, of course, this ship is, you know, 200 years old. So Kirk's like, okay, have all the information beamed up to Spock's computer. So they go up to the bridge to try to hear everything and on their way up there they get in the elevator and a crewman named Gary gets in the elevator with them and he's like yeah Lee which is the guy that's up on the bridge he sounded a little nervous so I figured I'd come up there and they're just like okay and he's like so how'd the chest game go and Spock's like he made a very, he's basically like, he made a very logical move. He's like, he moved his, he should have moved his rope. That should have been his next move. And Kirk's behind him and he's like, you know, like, he killed it kind of thing. And it opens, so they go on to the bridge. Gary takes over the helm while he's driving. The captain does not drive the ship himself. And... So, Kirk's like, okay, he's trying to listen at his station, and he's like, okay, the tapes are, they're burnt out, like, I, I can't hear anything, so, he's going to try another method, he's like, I'm going to see if I can get into the record banks, not just the tapes, so, he's trying to do that. And all these people start coming up to the deck, to the, whatchamacallit, um, the bridge. And they're like, okay, you wanted all the heads here of the different departments and stuff like that. For when we go out of the galaxy, because they're on the edge of the galaxy, but their their plan is to go through the galaxy, like to get out of it. And he's like, okay. So they all introduce themselves, who they are. I wish he knows who they are, but I guess it doesn't. I guess it doesn't, does it so the audience knows who it is. And Scotty's there, the new guy, even though he's not new, because you'll see him a bunch. And there is a psychologist lady that's new to the ship. We are going to call her Elizabeth because her last name is frankly hard to pronounce and I just screw it up every time so we're just going to skip all that. And she's psychology that's what she's there for. And she wants to study them in like intense situations, how the crew reacts, how he, re Captain, reacts, all that good stuff. And Spock's like, okay, I'm getting something. And she's like, if there's anything on that recording about how the crew reacted, then, you know, I'd like to know that too. And the Gary guy's like, oh, are you trying to figure out how to make our breed better? She gives as good as she gets, and she's like, no, from what I hear, that's your job, and that's what you do, line included. And he's like, oh, and he's like, Walker freezing you, net. You know, like, she's cold-hearted or whatever. No, nah, you just a player, she called you out. That's how that went down, but whatever. And Spock's like, okay, I'm, um... I'm getting something. He's like, okay. They went in to transfer to the next galaxy. They made it through. The ship started breaking down. 
and it turned them around and shot them back out. They've got seven dead, and he's like, no, wait, six dead. One of them made it, it came back. He's like, and now, for some reason, they're wanting to know everything they can know about ESP. And Kirk asked Elizabeth, what do you know about, you know, how do you know about ESP? And she's like, well, I kind of scored pretty high on mine. He's like, no, I don't want to know what you scored. I want to know about it, like what she knows about it, you know. She's like, well, you know, it's proven that you know, some people are extra sensitive and they can read stuff and, you know, back of cards. Or, you know, they know what's coming. That kind of stuff. And Spock's like, okay, I've got more. He's like, they are really, really interested in this ESP thing. He's like, but something went wrong because he said he says no I couldn't be hearing this right he's like I'm hearing the captain of that ship say destruct he's like hold on and he's like no he's like I must have heard it wrong he's like I swear it's saying that the captain gave the order to self-destruct like the ship like he's blowing up his own ship he's like no that can't be right and Kirk's like okay and then that's all they got that's all they can get off the recorder and Kirk's talking all his heads and he's like well you know what do y'all think we should do and one of them's like, well, we don't actually know what happened. We just know that they had kind of some kind of emergency. But that's really, fact-wise, that's all we know. And Kirk agrees. He's like, you know, I think that's a good enough reason that we need to go beyond the galaxy and find out what we can. He said there's going to be other ships traveling this way in the future. We need to find out what's out there. You know, that kind of thing. So they start taking off. You know, he gives the order, go ahead, helmsman, take us into the next galaxy. So they're going for a second, and you see like this pink line, and there's like a blue line above it and a blue line below it. And Spock's like, well, you know, some of our equipment is saying stuff. There's stuff there. Some of our equipment is saying there is not stuff there. And they're like, okay. That's not very helpful, but, you know, whatever. So, Kirk's like, okay, well, let's, let's do it. Let's go in. So, they go in. And... It's like, it looks like mist, like pink mist that they're in. And then it starts looking like there's a thunderstorm happening out there with the lights. And stuff's going out and catching on fire on the bridge. And, you know, they're, they're getting a bus wall by the electricity, I guess. It's, I mean, I guess we can call it electricity, but... It's not really electricity. And all of a sudden, the Elizabeth gets like attacked by some electrical charge and she like passes out. And then about a second later, the same thing happens to 
Gary, the guy at the helm. So, you know, Kirk, turn around, get us out of here, blah, 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 blah. So they finally get out of there. And Kirk goes and checks on the girl, Elizabeth. And, you know, she's like, I'm okay. You know, it felt like something, you know, shocked me, which is kind of what it looked like to us too, but, you know, whatever. So, Okay, so then he goes over and he checks on Gary, which him and Gary have a past. Like, they know each other. They're, they've been friends for a hot minute. So, he goes and checks on him and Gary's kind of laying down. And he's not really facing Kirk. Like, his head's down and... Kirk grabs him and asks him if he's okay, and he's like, yeah, I'm starting to feel better, kind of thing, and Kirk's like, okay, and then when Kirk flips him over and Gary opens his eyes, it looks like there's galaxies, like, or galaxy in his eye, like it's all glowy and stuff, and Kirk's like, what the? You know, because it's kind of, it's kind of freaky looking. Definitely looks weird. And, um, oh crap. So it switches to Gary in, like, the medical way. The doc's checking him out. This is not McCoy. This is a different doctor. Like, Dr. McCoy's not the only doctor on the ship. And he's like, I just don't get it. He's like, you're, like, in perfect health. Like, even the mo healthiest person I know has something wrong with them. Something. There's something off. Like, nobody's perfect. Except Gary seems to be perfect. And... You know, it kind of freaks the doctor out. And, you know, he's just baffled. He's trying to figure out why in the world this guy is just really healthy. So, Kurt goes down there. And he goes to talk to Gary. Because, like I said, they've been friends. And he's like... You know, how are you feeling? And he's like, you know, in some ways I feel better than I've ever felt, ever. Like, my whole life. And he's like, but you look worried. And he's like, oh, I've been worried about you forever. Well, apparently, Kurt was an instructor when he was a lieutenant at the academy, and he was... Gary was one of his students, and he was like, yeah, they told me before I took your class, you know, in Kirk's class, you either think or sink. He said, so what I did was I set you up with that little blonde lady, and he's like, you did that? And he's like, yeah, I had to get you distracted somehow, and he's like, I almost married her. <laughs> and he's like, well, then I guess I did a really good job, kind of thing. And, he, and Garrett's like, you better be nice to me, kind of thing. Kind of joking, kind of not joking, kind of thing. And he's like, you know, I'm ready to go back on duty. And he's like, no. I'm going to have Elizabeth watch over you for a little bit. And he's like, 
there's at least a hundred women on this ship and you pick that one. And Kirk's like, take it as a challenge. Which, you know, nowadays you could not say something like that because that would be so sexist. But whatever, this is the 60s, they could get away with that crap. And he's like, take it as a challenge. And he goes to walk off. And Gary's like, I told you, you better be nice to me. But when he starts saying it, his voice goes like really deep and echoey. And Kirk whips around and looks at him. And he's kind of like, okay, what? That was kind of weird. Because it was kind of weird. It would be kind of weird to me. And he's like, Kirk's like, okay, I want to know, you know, what's going on. And I still want to know what happened to the value. Um, he wants to know why the captain, of all people, ordered the destruction of his own ship. Because that is like a last minute, you don't want to fall into enemy hands, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, Apparently, Spock and Kirk are going through records of stuff, and you see Elizabeth go talk to Gary, and she's like, look, I know, you know, you don't prefer me, but, you know, since this is my detail and this is what I have to do, you know, can we try to get along? And he's like, I don't have anything against you. And she's like, not even the freezer unit? Because, you know, earlier he called her a walk-in freezer unit. And he was like, no, I'm sorry about that. Which he should be. But he tells her that he is sorry about that. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And she's like, okay. So she's standing there, and above, he's like laying down, and above him is a little thing that says like heartbeat, you know, blood pressure, like keeps up with all his vitals or whatever. And she's watching it, he was like, it would be crazy if I could move those, right? Well, when he says that, all of a sudden they start moving. She's like, how did you do that? And he's like, I don't know. And he's like, I just thought it and it happened. And she's like, okay. And she's like, can you do anything else? And he's like, well, I can remember everything I've read. And she's like, okay, so she picks up a book that he had been reading, and she's like, okay, page 386. That may not be the exact page number, but yeah. And he starts quoting it, quoting the, what the page says. And she's like, okay, that is crazy. And then, he grabs a hold of her and pulls her, and so she's kind of like leaning over the bed or whatever, and he makes the little monitor thing, basically like that he has no heartbeat, he has no nothing, and then he just like, and she's like, and she's like, stop it, and she's grabbing, and she's like, stop it, and she puts her head on his chest to like listen for a heartbeat or whatever, and 
he kind of chuckles or whatever about it, which she did not find it very funny. But he found it funny. But she did not find it very funny. So then she leaves, and then there's a part where he's reading a book, and he's reading like a page a second. And then he starts going faster. And then it goes back to the bridge and Spock and Kirk are watching him on the monitor and they're watching him just click through page after page after page after page after page. And then he just kind of like stops and then he just like looks at the camera that's recording him. So he's kind of like looking at them and he's kind of like, yeah, I know you're watching me. Which he should have absolutely no clue that they're watching him. So Elizabeth gets back on the bridge and she's like, you know, I, I, we need to figure out why only certain people, because he had nine people die. Kirk had nine people die when they went through the thing. She wants to know why they're targeted. And they're like, we think we figured that out. Everybody who was targeted had a high ESP rating and Gary had the highest rating and she's like that doesn't make any sense like you know to her she's just like okay why would anybody target that kind of thing or a thing target that thing because it's not like they saw anybody in the mist or anything like that oh excuse me and they're you know they're basically telling her that's the only thing that like everybody basically has in common is that they all have this high rating um, she's just really not buying it not that it makes it not true just she's not buying it so she goes to hang out with Gary some more, you know, because she is studying him. He is her case right now. So she's hanging out with him and stuff. And then Kurt calls for a meeting with all the staff, heads of staff or whatever. And she gets in there late and she's like, sorry, I was talking to Gary. And. Kirk's like, okay. And Spock's like, that's not Gary. That is whatever he is changing into. And she's like, look, I know your people like don't have feelings or whatever, but you've worked with this guy forever. How can you say stuff like that? And Kirk's like, uh, you need to stop. Basically, his it's his job to tell me things, whether I like it or not. You know, what's going on what's happening whether Kirk likes it or not is beyond doesn't matter and she's like but you know he could be great for mankind you know we could be better human beings and you know all that kind of stuff well everybody else in the room was looking at her like uh have you lost your mind <laughs> and He's like, Sulu, tell me what you just said before she walked in here. I mean, Scotty, not Sulu. Sorry. And Scotty's like, all the controls on the Enterprise started moving on their own. They were doing their own thing. And Spock's like, yeah, and when this was happening they were watching Gary on the monitor and he was enjoying it and laughing it up it was amusing to him like he was playing with a toy because he was the one doing it and they asked her you know have you seen that he can do any of this stuff you know to that degree and she has to be honest, so she tells them yes, but you can tell that she doesn't want to tell them yes. 
Like, she feels like she just needs to protect him, I guess. I don't know. But she's like, oh, yeah. And Spock's like, look, the more powerful he gets, the less amusing we're going to be. Eventually, we're just going to be annoying. And Sulu's like, mathematic-wise, it's like, if you take a penny and you double it every day, by the end of the month, you're a millionaire. So he's going to be, like, super powerful. Kirk's like, okay. Everybody's dismissed. I don't want anybody telling any of the crew members any of this. Like, he doesn't want everybody else knowing what's going on. They're like, okay, so they leave, and Spock stays behind, and he's like, Kirk's like, you know, do you have any recommendations, anything like that, and Spock's like, you know, he's got two recommendations, which Kirk ain't going like either one of them, but he says, first one, there's a planet nearby, Delta Vega has like a, it's like a self-sustaining thing that takes measurements and stuff like that, but it's not, like there's nobody on the planet, it's just the information that gathers. And he's like, we can take him here, we can fix the ship, and make sure he gets down there. And he's like, if you're telling me that I'm supposed to maroon him down there. That's not going to happen. Which, I mean, because the guy's his friend and he's known him, like, I'm going to say like 15, 15 years, something like that. And he's like, that's not, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not marooning him down there. Spock's like, okay. The second option is you kill him now while you can. And, of course, he ain't going to pick that option. So he's like, fine. Set a course for Delta Vega. So they set a course for this planet. And they get there, and Kirk's like, okay. You know, we're going to send our people down to try to get whatever they can to fix the ship because, you know, the ship's broken because of the whole going to a different galaxy thing. And he's like, and my mission is to maroon some I've known for 15 years down there. Which he's not very happy about, but, you know, at the same time, you know, so he goes back to the medical bay and the guy's laying there and Kirk and Spock and Elizabeth walk in and you know he wants to know how he's doing and all that. You know, he's good, whatever. And he's like, I sense worry from you. You're worried about your ship. And he's like, can you read our minds? And he's like, you know, just I sense worry from you. And Kirk's like, well, what would you do if you were me? And he's like, I'd probably do what Spock's over there thinking and kill you now while I could, which is not what you want to hear, but you know, it is what it is. So, he's like, I know we're above this planet, and you're not going to maroon me here. I might not want to stay here. I might want to go somewhere else. And Kirk kind of like goes towards him and he like shoots out his hand and then like shoots electricity into Kirk and then of course Scott, Spock comes and he does that to Spock and Elizabeth's like stop it stop it 
you know, because that's, that's apparently that's what she does is tells people to stop things. And while she's doing that, Spock and Kirk kind of regain their footing and they tackle him and he tells Elizabeth, he's like, I want him unconscious for a while. So she gives him a shot, knocks him out. And they go to the, they carry him to the transporter room. And he kind of comes to a little bit while they're there. And he's like, you're going to be sorry. I'm going to squish you like bugs kind of thing. And, of course, this is just re-solidifying what Kirk is doing to Kirk, like, in his brain. You know. So, they get down to the planet. Part of the crew starts trying to fix the ship and taking up equipment and, you know, stuff like that. And Kirk tells one of the engineer guys, hey... He basically wants him to rig up something that could be set to explode if need be. Okay. So they have put Gary basically in like a cell that has a force field, no bars, it has like force field. And they go talk to him. And he's mad, which, you know, okay, I get that, but, you know, what's done is done, dude. And he tries to get out of the force field. And after attacking it for a little bit, it shoots him backwards and his eyes change back to normal. And, you know, Kirk goes like he's going to go in there, but then his eyes change back like maybe like two seconds. Which, of course, you know, Kirk wants it to be over and him be, you know, back to normal and they can all go home kind of thing. But that ain't how that's going now. So... <clears throat> Kirk goes and checks on all the work. Scotty's like, okay, you know, we've got everything we need. Everything's fixed, blah, 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 blah. And the guy tells him everything's set up as far as, like, the, you know, if he needs to blow stuff up kind of thing. He's like, you know, it's just this button, whatever. He's like, okay. And Scotty comes over with a radio and he's like did you get the rifle phaser and he's Kirk's like what I didn't order and then Spock walks in there with a rifle phaser and he's like yeah we got it and Spock tells him hold on Spock's like you know he's tried the force build again a couple times but he's being able to do it longer every time he does it. And he's like, okay. So he goes in there to talk to him. And she, Elizabeth's in there. Not in the room, but, you know, outside the room. Talking to him or whatever. And She's like, I'm going to stay with him. She's just like staring at him in the thing. And she's like, I'm going to stay with him. And he's like, Kirk's like, uh, no. You're going to go back to the ship. Like, you have a job kind of thing. And, uh, so he's like, no, you're going to go back to the ship. Because you've got stuff to do. And she's like, no, I'm going to stay here. Well, then, 
the guy, Gary, does his little phew, lightning thing and it goes through the force field and he hits Kirk and Spock. So they're knocked out. And while they're talking to him right before he knocks them all out, or knocks them out, there's only two of them, um, you can see him controlling things where that blow up button is. And the guy that is installing that, he strangles him to death with one of the cords using his telekinesis. Telekinesis? I think that's it. I think it's telekinesis. And strangles him. So there's nobody to do the bomb. And then you see Elizabeth walk into the room because he waves his hand and the force field goes away. So then Elizabeth walks in there with him and he turns her around to look in the mirror and she's got the galaxy eyes going on now. Which you couldn't see it before because she was facing him like the camera was behind her so you couldn't see it. But that was why she said she's staying with him. Which I get that, whatever. And they leave. And it cuts to Kirk and Spock. And the doctor comes in there and, you know, makes him conscious again or whatever. And he goes to make Spock conscious and he's like, no. You leave him for a, a minute. And he takes the phaser rifle that Spock had that was on the floor. And... He says, in 12 hours, if I have not contacted y'all to come get me, then he wants them to, he doesn't say he wants them to nuke the planet, but he wants the planet filled with radiation so that nothing can live. So in other words, he wants to kill all three of them if he's not back in 12 hours. So the doctor's like, okay. So then you assume, because you don't actually see it, but you assume that the doctor wakes up Spock and he tells him, you know, this is what Kirk said, blah, 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 blah. So, Kirk's out on the planet looking for them. You see them and she's like, nobody can survive here. Like, it would be, we would need a miracle to survive here. And he's like... Well, then I'll make one. And he waves his little arms. And then there's this little oasis with, like, water. Is that a mosquito? With, like, water. A little fountain. Some berries. Some flowers. And goes back to Kirk. And he's still looking around for him and he's like you know Elizabeth you're gonna like being a god and cause at this point I mean he you know and she's like no we shouldn't talk like that and he's like yeah you know we are gods da 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 and Granted, you know, he's been doing this a lot longer than her, the God thing. So he can do stuff that she can't do yet. And basically they're sitting there talking and he's like, James, can you hear me? Because that's Kirk's first name, James. And you could see James looking around. He's like, you can't see me. I'm not right there. And she's like, what? And he's like, he, he, basically, you know, he's being a fool looking for us. And he's like, look. And he makes this apple tree up here. But it's like special apples from like some other planet. That I guess are supposed to be bomb or whatever. I don't know. And 
So they start eating this apple. <clears throat> and then she's like, oh, I can see him in my mind. And he's like, go to him, Elizabeth. Like all godlike voice and stuff. She's like, he's like, go talk to him. And she's like, okay. So she goes and Kirk sees her and, you know, he's kind of like, oh. And she's like, it happened to me too. It just took a little bit longer. And he's like, you know, you do see what's happening to him, right? And she's like, he's just trying to do what's best for him and me. And he's like, uh no and he's doing what's best for what he wants and you know he's trying to convince her that you know she needs to help him kind of thing and eventually after they're done talking well they're not all talking really but you know, he's coming, he's fixing to show up. She's like, he's on his way. And he's like, just watch, just watch what he does. Because he's like, you know, gods need compassion, whatever. He's not a god. He's a human with powers. You know. He's flawed, basically. And he has no compassion. And God needs compassion. <clears throat> so Gary finally shows up. And he's like, you know, I've got this old friend. And he needs to die. But he deserves a good burial. Which, what sane person says something like that? You know? And so he does his little hand thing, and a hole appears in the ground. And a, enough for a, a body to be buried in. And he tells Kirk, you need to pray to your God. And Kirk's like talking to Elizabeth and he's like, he didn't say gods, he said God. And a headstone appears and it says, James R. Kirk. Which makes no sense because his middle name is not R. His middle name is Tiberius, which is with a T. But if you only ever watched it once, you you wouldn't know that. So I guess that little bit of information doesn't really matter if you never actually watch it. But he tells him, you know, you need to pray to me. And he forces Kirk to walk over to him. He forces him on his knees. He's like, you need to pray for me for a swift death and all that stuff and Elizabeth is like stop it stop it and so she attacks Gary with her own little lightning stuff she's obviously a quick learner way more quicker than him because it took him like days it took her like a couple of hours so anyway they start electrocuting each other and start fighting with each other and all that and on her last little shot that she gives him his eyes turn back to normal and Kirk pounces I mean he's on him like why don't right right then and there he's on him and they start fighting. And then, like fist fighting. 
and then Kirk has him down and he's on top of him and he's got like a rock in his hand like a you know he's fixing on bash his head in and he's like forgive me Gary well if he hadn't taken that second to say that but he did take the second to say it so Gary's eyes change back and he throws them off and they're still fighting, but now Kirk and his butt kicked. Well, they both fall in the hole that he had dug earlier for Kirk to be buried in. And Kirk jumps out, grabs the phaser rifle that he had, shoots this big old rock, like a big rectangle rock, which, you know, in a natural setting, that rock would not be there, but whatever. And it traps Gary in the hole. So then he goes over to Elizabeth and she's like, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. And then she dies because, you know, she was fighting him and I guess she just ran out of energy and killed herself. So he goes back up, he calls the ship, come get me. And of course he's all shirt ripped up, blood everywhere, you know, that kind of thing. And he gets back up to the ship. He goes. We're going to assume he goes and cleans up because the next time we see him, there's no blood. And, you know, he's got a clean shirt and stuff. And he's like, okay. Elizabeth, in his little note, you know, she died in the performance of her duties. And Gary, he, same notation. Spock kind of looks at him and he's like, that's how I want his record to end. He didn't ask for this to happen to him, which is true. He was just in there piling the ship. And Spock's like, I fell for him too. And Kirk's like, there may be hope for you yet. And that's the end of the episode. Now, I forgot to tell y'all at the beginning, so i my bad, that I'd already done my brows and primer, which is a normal thing to me because I'm gonna be honest with y'all, it takes me a hot minute to do my brows, okay? I am not good at it. I mean, I'm like, you know, magnifying me. I mean, it it just does. And I'm sure y'all don't wanna sit there for 15 minutes with this, you know? So that's why I don't do it on camera. But anyway, so, Remember, makeup or not, you're beautiful.